Hey, this is Nubia Sunshine coming back to you today on November 18, 2013 to talk more about our chakras. And in this particular uh, video, I will be talking to you about our second chakra, which is our sacral chakra. And in Sanskrit terms, it is our Vahistana. So it took me forever to learn how to say that, but I finally got it. This chakra is related to the color orange, as you can see me rocking my orange, as well as my rings, my jewelry, you know, it's my thing. It's my color. Uh, I love it, and this is one of my favorite chakras. So today I'm going to break it down to you, what it's about, and how to identify blockages, and how to identify when it's overactive. I also want to mention that our sacral chakra is also a water related energy. So it's affiliated with the water element, which also means fluidity, fluidly, moving fluidly, moving like water. And um, it is befitting because it is also related to the zodiac signs of Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer, which are also water signs. Uh, again, our sacral chakra is related to our feelings of sexuality, emotion. It is related to our most intimate relationships with our loved ones, people who we hold close. Like in the first chakra, I mentioned that, you know, it's related to our family and our community and our cliques. But where the second chakra is more related to more intimate and close, close relationships. Relationships dealing with emotion. Relationships that are dealing with sexual relations. So it's all encompassing with that. The sacral chakra is also affiliated with our creative center. It is where we spark our creativity. And most people say that they don't have a creative spark. But every one of us has a creative spark. When you are in a situation like, for instance, um, um, somebody who's driving and is, is lost. You know, you find different ways in order to figure out where you are, to finally get where you are. And that entails you being a bit creative, even if it means going to someone else and asking them for direction, or trying to figure it out through your GPS, or just backtracking and looking at where you are and getting your surroundings. We all find ways to creatively assist us through things in life and we use that creativity and so many different things it's not just delegated to music and art and just the talent and having the ability to do something that is more artistic but it's the way you your patterns your how you come up with things and how your imagination is sparked so it does uh, resonate on creativity it also is in reference to our emotional state how we are feeling how we are feeling about ourselves and how we are feeling about others that we are very close to. I associate uh, also the sacral um, organs with this particular sacral chakra would be our uh, genitalia, it would be our reproductive organs, our kidneys, and our bladder, and our sacrum. And those are the physical areas of where it's affiliated with. You will find your sacral chakra just below your belly button in your abdominal area. So it dominates that particular area just slightly above your root chakra. And again, like I said, it's affiliated with the color orange. But I do want to read to you some blockages that you can notice physically with your sacral chakra as I read them off to you. The physical issues related to a blockage would be fertility problems, sexual arousal disorders, a nervous stomach like butterflies in the stomach, movements, uh, stiffened movement like if you're really stiff, bladder infections, kidney infections, um, your skipped or min missed menstrual for women, and lower back pain. And those are just blockages. So when you start to feel lower back pain, just as I mentioned in your root chakra, you can get lower back pain. You can also get lower back pain from your sacral chakra being blocked. And you will be able to tell the difference between the two just in the type of pain that you receive. And um, just opening those blockages 
will always entail the same thing in order to remove that lower back pain. But it is very important to understand when you are having a root chakra blockage and a sacral chakra blockage. Because then you know exactly what needs to be aligned. And chances are if your root is off, your sacral is probably off as well. But I also want to read your psychological issues that are related to your um, sacral blockage as well. And those could be creative blocks, fear of relationships, you know, fear of commitment. Not trusting, emotional coldness, the inability to express pleasure, coldness or, you know, um, impotence, and then shallow relationships and communication issues with children. Now, being that your sacral chakra is the chakra that is related from parent to child, it is important to try to have that emotional bond with your children. Now, I know a lot of us grew up with parents who... Uh, were not as connected to us emotionally. Some parents, you know, didn't really express uh, affection the way some other parents did. And some of us may have grown up with parents who just didn't know how to express that. And that is kind of a block for your sacral chakra, being able to express your emotions, especially from parent to child. It's so important because you, you kind of carry that along when you get older. And I know people now who are so detached from their emotions because they didn't get that kind of affection and that kind of loving environment from a parent. And even though the love may have been there, but expressing it and showing it and being detached from your emotions could cause you to be able to pass that along to your children and then they grow up doing the same thing. So that is definitely a second chakra blockage. Also, as we talked about overages, which is an overcharge of energy in your sacral chakra, I'm just going to read some physical aspects of that as well, so you can be able to identify your physical, your physical issues with the block or overage of your sacral chakra. And that would be emotional eating, uh, sexual addiction, substance abuse, frequent urination, heavy menstrual flow, PMS, or hyperactivity. And notice that all of those symptoms are things that are over the top. So when you have, when you have a, um, a, a heightened sexual arousal or a high, heightened sexual activity, it could, it could teeter on nymphomania. Um, excessively emotional could be always crying and, you know, always, you know, just being overly reactive to certain situations on an emotional level. Like allowing your emotions to uh, express everything or make your decisions. So that, that would be overactive. On the physical aspect would be, um, well, that was the physical aspect. The psychological aspect would be bipolar disorder, panic attacks, uh, excessive emotional and like mood swings, just from one angle to the next, which is also considered a bipolar uh, symptom of bipolarism. Uh, as well as addiction to pleasure and emotional dependency and being ruled, like I said, by your feelings. Allowing your feelings and your emotions to make the decisions in your life rather than you, con you know, thinking and detaching yourself. Sometimes um, with people that I know who say that they're empaths have very difficult time of detaching themselves from their emotions. So empaths are people who, such as myself, who is an empath, Someone who emotionally can feel what the next person feels. And, and kind of puts myself in that person's situation and feels it emotionally the way they would feel it. And it's as an empath, it's not a bad thing. But when you are making decisions based on your empathic abilities, it does affect you. And it does um, stand in the way of you being able to detach your emotions from plenty of situations. And I've been there. But um, I do want to talk to you more about uh, the ways that you can align your sacral chakra, how you can be able to get yourself back in a place where you're not blocked, and how to get that kundalini to rise up into your sacral chakra. And I will be back with you with the second portion of the video just to explain and go through some meditation techniques to show you how to remove a blocked chakra, how to align your second chakra, and how to alleviate some of that overactive 
chakra activity. So thank you for joining me.